Uh, so welcome folks, it's a pleasure to have you in this particular summit. And in today, my, my focus of this presentation is going to be setting the stage for the next two days. So obviously, I mean, some of you might be uh, familiar with some of the topics I'm going to discuss, uh, but I want to set the uh, stage correct uh, so that all the people have a understanding about the topics we are going to discuss in the next two days. So we will discuss about um, uh, integrated API supply chain for the uh, today and tomorrow, various topics from various parts of the supply chain. And then this particular talk will be a level setting talk for each of these topics, right? Uh, so let's start with the definition of a supply chain. So if you if you take a product, for example, right, uh, in order to build a product, you need the raw materials or components, which are the source materials, and you need uh, distributors for those source materials. Then when, when you produce the product, uh, you need a distribution channel where you will, uh, the, the distributors will take your product and then distribute to uh, the customers uh, to consume it. So basically the supply chain means the network between the company and its suppliers or distributors uh, to, to produce and distribute the products uh, to the final uh, buyer, right? This particular supply chain concept was there for a long time. And uh, I mean, several companies have uh, evaluated these supply chains and then optimized uh, to, to reduce any of the bottlenecks and then keep on improving it. Uh, so this is the definition of the supply chain. Uh, but to just, to, just to set the expectation correct, uh, this integrated supply chain for uh, APA does not mean uh, digitize, digitizing the existing supply chains, right? Obviously there is a effort going on on digitizing the, the conventional supply chain, but uh, we are not going to talk about that today. This integrated supply chain for API means uh, take how, how you would uh, produce an API, a new end-to-end -end digital system to enable the business model around API. So how would you produce an API? How would you take it to the customers uh, for them to consume? So why specific about API? Uh, so what we believe is APIs are the products of the 21st century, all right? And that is the reason why we are going into these particular topics uh, today and tomorrow on how you would uh, produce API by using the supply chain. So why? So th this is the definition of a product. I mean, uh, the product means uh, different stuff to different people. And often uh, what comes to our mind is the physical product. But if you look at the definition too, uh, especially like something such as service that is marketed or sold as a commodity, again, it is considered as a product and which is the close, uh, uh, close definition which we are going to discuss today, right? Um, so if you look at the evolution of the product, again, uh, just, uh, just think about the physical product or in the automobile industry, it started with the horse carriages, and then in the early stage, uh, there were the early stage uh, car, uh, which is the second picture. And then in the 80s, you had some uh, improvement to that particular model. And then now you have Teslas and other, other vehicles, which are more modern and uh, more advanced. So there is a transition going from uh, kind of a mechanical to electrical to kind of electronics and computer related stuff. And if you take any of the cars today, uh, there are lots of software components involved and, uh, and uh, most of the controls and most of the um, manipulations are happening uh, by using software, right? So there was a seminal paper written by uh, Mark Anderson in 2011 on defining software is eating the world. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this is a very uh, great paper. If you haven't read it, uh, please take a look in this particular paper. So basically what he was telling is uh, the software will, uh, will uh, control or will uh, have an impact on almost all the life in the world, right? Almost all the industries in the world. So if you take, uh, for example, healthcare now, right? Uh, take CT scanner or any other instruments. So if you go to a hospital, there are 
systems which manages your records uh, uh, and, and uh, patient management and uh, drug management and so on. Everything is driven out of software. Or if you take uh, telecommunication, again, uh, you are calling somebody, there is a router, switches and uh, so on. Everything is controlled through software. So basically the software is controlling the world uh, in, in current era, right? And then uh, Sadhya and Adela went uh, one uh, step ahead and define every company as a software company. Obviously, I mean, these companies might produce uh, several products and services uh, like car or, or mobile phone or any of these uh, uh, physical devices. But the, the, the competitive advantage comes from the use of their softwares. Obviously, I mean, the, the real value people are going to get from these uh, products are going to be based on the software which is underneath and which is powering uh, these components. So take uh, the product experiences even now, right? Uh, in like 10, 15 years back, uh, we used to buy these fonts, uh, which is called feature phone now. Uh, you uh, buy with a set of features. You can use any of the features which are available at that point and nothing else, uh, only features available at the time of you are buying the phone, you will continue to use it. And uh, that's it uh, for the feature phone. But if you look at the, uh, uh, the smartphone now, right? Uh, and you buy the phone, but you keep on adding applications uh, uh, on top of it. And even, even the phone you might have bought last year, but still you can install some application which was invented which was produced uh, today. That means the, the, the actual experience of the phone is coming from the applications which are running on the phone. And that, that has changed the mindset of the phone from us, right? Uh, and then obviously, I mean, the experience is coming primarily from the software components uh, which are underneath. And take car again, uh, right? In the case of connected car, for example, uh, you have a physical object, it's a physical car, but then the capabilities are coming from by using several software components uh, like accident detection, so where you are in uh, the location detections or uh, Wi-Fi uh, breakdown uh, notification, et cetera, et cetera. The, the cool factor is like even though uh, the car you bought like five years ago, still the capability of the car is keep on improving. By, by the softwares. The software is keep on improving either from the car side or from the backend side. And the capabilities of the car as an experience the user is having is keep on imp improving. And uh, take Uber, for example, right? Uber is a, it's a very great software uh, company um, uh, kind of a case study, right? Uh, in in the case of Uber, Uber, uh, I mean, you are using an uh, application, mobile application to call a car and you give the location where you are in, the location where you had to go and then uh, pay the uh, fare, uh, the car fee by using a credit card and then uh, some car comes and picks you. But if you look at Uber, the map functionality they are using is not coming from them, right? It is coming from uh, uh, Google. Um, Google Maps and so on. The payment functionality coming from uh, some other payment provider, maybe like Stripe or some other payment provider, and they don't even own cars. But what they are building is a software experience by bringing components from various suppliers and then provide a digital experience for the users. And as far as the user is concerned, their primary concern is how I'm going to go from A to B, and that particular problem is solved by Uber by, by inventing on the, on the concepts of software, right? So what is underneath everything, uh, all these experiences are APIs, right? And that's why we claim like APIs are the 21st century product, and all these experiences uh, coming uh, from from the API. So the APIs are like uh, the Lego box, uh, Lego blocks in this particular um, example, in the in this particular picture, right? Uh, so, I mean, uh, for people who are familiar with uh, Lego and uh, who enjoy using Lego, you will understand that Lego blocks, you can, as far as you have the creativity and as far as you have the imagination, you can build any uh, 
any kind of a structure by using a Lego block. The same way that like you have the APIs as the components and as the products, and then you can build any additional or any uh, creative way of creating a digital experience for the users. Right? So if you look at any of the product architecture now, here we are discussing about two uh, different architecture. One is the centralized and decentralized. Uh, in both of them, uh, the API will be the central part of this particular architecture. So if you look at the centralized architecture, which is on the left-hand side, um, we, we have, we have uh, defined utility API, domain API, and edge APIs. We have the utility APIs will expose your um, data or system of records, uh, et cetera, for the, for the users. So basically, this is exposing your data and the capabilities, core technical capabilities as APIs. Then we have the domain API, which are exposing uh, your business logics. And often, these are like uh, uh, combined API or um, uh, by combining multiple utility APIs, uh, you might create a domain API together with some uh, logic, business logic, and then that exposed as an uh, API. And then the H APIs uh, fit between the end use application and your API management layer. So basically, these are the APIs, uh, a managed API you will expose to your end users uh, uh, or your application developers to use to build some digital experiences uh, for the end users, right? So the core fact is this is a layered or segmented architecture, but still what brings them together as a, as a single architecture is, is this glue part, uh, which is done by the APIs, right? And if you look at the current, I mean, distributed or uh, in a cloud native or modern architecture, still, I mean, uh, all these services and all these APIs are distributed and each of these components still they expose API and API are the way uh, all of these components are connected together uh, to, to build the overall experience. Again, even in this particular case, you can have the utility API, domain API and H API based on the, the, the data they are exposing or based on the way the APIs are used, but still these are like distributed and glued together by using the API. So API sits at the core part of any of the current architecture, if you take any architecture now, right? Any of the product architecture. So we have written uh, these two reference architecture in this particular link uh, we have given. Uh, this is a uh, release from the creative commons. And we encourage uh, uh, people to uh, take a look as well as give uh, feedback around uh, uh, of, of uh, about these concepts. So this feedback can be, I mean, you can create an issue uh, by giving your comments or uh, you can uh, provide a pull request or uh, can even give uh, comments about uh, what whether you like it or whether you agree with this particular architecture and so on. So let's take a look at the history of this API, right? Uh, I mean, uh, these are history of the uh, applications. So if you look at like 70s, uh, you had mainframe and you have a monolithic applications, right? Um, so basically this monolithic application solves a particular problem. It might be solving the problem well enough. However, when there are changes happening uh, in the market or changes happening in the environment, it's very hard to change this application. It's like changing, um, turning a ship, very hard. You had to make sure that it doesn't break any of the existing systems. And the moment you touch in one part, the entire application is affected and possibly uh, without you realizing and understanding, it might change the behavior of the applications. So the business leaders and technical leaders understood this particular problem and they started to disaggregate the applications. But initially it went as enterprise applications uh, split it into multiple parts and then departmental applications split it further into the parts and so on and so on. And, uh, and then we came to these APIs and microservices and serverless architecture and splitting these particular components. So what happened here is when we split each of these parts so that uh, we can we can change 
the uh, the agility of the organization uh, we can uh, change the behavior of the application behavior of the organizations uh, based on the changing demands in the market uh, we split up the apis and then combine them together to form an application right uh, so that is how the apis uh, initially created uh, initially it was uh, meant as and even though it's meant as an internal api you identify that uh, the, the APIs went to a sufficiently isolated and useful functionality. This is useful for even outside the organization people, right? Outside uh, uh, other third party providers and other third party partners. So, what happened at that stage is uh, uh, the organization started selling these API, right? Uh, so, obviously, uh, then we started treating this as a product, and there are several monetization models uh, people have identified or come up with to sell this particular API. So these are like four different uh, buckets of monetization, which, which uh, we were discussing. Um, so the first one is the direct monetized, where the, the organization expose the API for their, uh, their consumers. Yeah, the consumers can be their partners or uh, other third party application builders, et cetera, they are using the API uh, provided by the organization and then they are paying for uh, the, the usage of the uh, API. So basically what happens is uh, the organization exposes and then uh, manages the API and then monetize the API directly, right? And the fourth model is uh, kind of a backbone for digital transformation. So the organizations, uh, they expose their capabilities and data and their uh, system of records into APIs uh, so that any, uh, any application builders can come and consume the API. So in the model here, this is kind of a common model where um, the, the API provider or the backbone provides an application building capabilities as well as exposing the APIs so that uh, any any application builders can come and uh, consume the API. Uh, they can just subscribe and consume the API without worrying about how the internal plumbings and internal data structures are working, etc. What they care is the uh, user experience and what the end user wants and they see a catalog of uh, capabilities available. They just combine the capability based on their imagination and based on their creativity, and then build an application and uh, and give it to their end users. So these are like four uh, different models where people can make uh, uh, money out of these API products. So uh, we now established why API as a product, uh, why we are considering API as a product, uh, and now let's uh, look at the supply chain. So this is a uh, this is a great paper, a great article written in the new stack, uh, which is comparing the industry supply chain uh, with, with the digital supply chain. Uh, so, I mean, if you look at any of the physical products, uh, obviously you have to start with uh, some source material, uh, whether it can be components, ingredients, or any other sources uh, which you are getting, then combining them and manufacture a product. And then when the product is available, you need to distribute to various uh, distributors um, so that they can take the product to the customers. They sell the products and then the, the end users, so the customers consume the product uh, to get the benefit out of the product, right? Uh, if you look at the API lifecycle, API uh, experience, again, there is a similar experience, right? Uh, so initially you will understand the discovery part where you understand what are the data and system of records or services you want to expose, uh, which are available as ingredients or components. Then you develop some uh, digital solutions by combining these APIs, uh, or possibly you might create a new API out of combining other APIs or other data sources. You deploy the uh, API or applications uh, on, on some place so that the end users can come and uh, consume. Uh, then uh, the cu customers will come and register for the API or the product, and then uh, they will use it and they will get an experience. So basically you have a close uh, similar supply chain going uh, in the case of API products as well. 
And then uh, these uh, products don't exist alone, right? And these products exist uh, in and rely on ecosystem. Uh, so, I mean, uh, if you look at any of the current products, the, the consumer expectation is so complex that uh, a single company might not be able to build all the capabilities needed uh, to build the product, right? So they have to rely on an ecosystem to get uh, supplies around. So even, I mean, when we talk about uh, uh, Uber example, uh, they are taking some API from Google Maps, uh, some API from uh, payment providers and etc. and then put together to build a new uh, digital experience, right? So these products uh, exist in an ecosystem. So that uh, raises a, a requirement for a marketplace. Uh, so this is a typical uh, picture of a Sunday market, for example, right? So in a market, uh, take an example of a market, uh, the Sunday market. In a market, uh, there are several providers uh, bringing several items like vegetables, fruits, uh, uh, fish, or whatnot. But there might be some other people who are playing music, some other people, having kind of a, like a drawing some pictures and so on. And there are lots of consumers coming to uh, consume various items. So what the marketplace provides the consumer is, is uh, all the capabilities or all the items in a single place, right? So uh, maybe like uh, take an example, I am going to the market uh, to buy a vegetable, right? And my expectation was to, was to buy a vegetable. Uh, so I go to the market. But I happen to notice uh, there's a drawing about uh, a dog and I want to hang it in my, um, uh, in my room. So I, uh, I haven't planned to buy a drawing, but I went and noticed there is a drawing available and then I purchased. My primary expectation was to buy vegetables, but uh, because the marketplace bringing various products, various other kinds of products, I also noticed and bought that particular product. So basically, I mean, uh, when we go to Amazon, again, uh, as an example, uh, we buy a particular book and then we identify several other kind of items. When it say people buy this, uh, they also bought this and you're tempted to buy those items as well. It, so marketplace uh, accelerates or uh, uh, synergize the, the efforts from various vendors, all right? So often uh, the question, common uh, question people ask is, uh, I have a, a API portal, isn't, isn't that a marketplace? Uh, so the API portal is a single provider. It is like uh, you are having a drawing shop, right? Um, so let's say if you are having a drawing shop, uh, you are selling drawings, uh, the, the only people you will sell drawings are people who are planned and coming to buy a drawing from your shop. All right, not a random person who is going to buy a vegetable and happen to notice that you have a drawing and coming and buying you a drawing. That's the difference between a, a particular focus shop versus a marketplace. Marketplace, uh, uh, there are multiple providers and uh, the multiple providers attract multiple consumers and that multiple consumers attracts more providers and then it will come into a synergy and an ecosystem and it will build organically into a bigger ecosystem, right? So with, uh, uh, we have identified five different kinds of uh, marketplaces, uh, especially in the case of APIs. Uh, uh, the first one is the internal federated marketplace. So this is an internal conception, but still uh, there are independent uh, parties building APIs. Uh, it can be like business units, or it can be uh, self-isolated uh, teams who are building these APIs. So uh, for an for a, uh, application builder, uh, for them to understand what are the capability, capabilities available, instead of going to each of these business units and identifying the API, they can come to a common place and can discover all the capabilities or all the APIs available at that point to build the applications. Uh, so uh, that is a common uh, internal uh, usage in the case of uh, uh, marketplace. 
So the second pattern is uh, partner marketplace where the primary uh, API provider uh, runs the marketplace, but uh, they let their partners also to publish the APIs. So the advantage here is uh, consumer comes and they identify the primary uh, API provider. At the same time, the value additions are coming from the partner network as well. And then they can consume uh, all the API from a single place, uh, which uh, eases their life uh, and then and give us, gives a good experience for them. Third model is a closed group marketplace. Um, uh, so due to some reasons, if you want uh, only a closed set of people to consume your API, then this is a example of, uh, uh, of providing a closed group marketplace. Um, for example, take an example of a digital government, right? And uh, each of these uh, government uh, departments or government uh, organizations, uh, they want to expose the API but uh, the government might not want some random developer to come and build an application. So they want uh, somebody who are certified, uh, somebody who understand the complete, uh, the complete knowledge of the departments to build the applications. So in this particular case, I mean, uh, this, this might be like uh, invite only participants or possibly there might be a registration process, but the registration might uh, go under an approval process where the, the API providers or the marketplace vendor will uh, evaluate the consumers and then approve only selected uh, people based on some criteria. So the fourth model is similar to the second model where uh, the, uh, the primary provider as well as partners uh, uh, expose their API uh, similar to the partner marketplace, but the revenue share will be a bit different in this particular case. Uh, so any revenue coming uh, might be shared uh, between these uh, API providers. So there might be some complex logic behind how they want to share the revenues between the participants. So again, uh, the revenue sharing models uh, might be different in this particular marketplace. The fifth model is uh, aggregator marketplace where uh, some uh, API provider, the marketplace provider combine APIs uh, from multiple API provider, the individual API providers, combine them together into a single value added API and then expose that combined API as, as uh, in the marketplace for others to consume. And so basically they are providing some value addition. So these are the five models we have identified up to now and uh, I mean, can explain any of the current uh, marketplace needs by, uh, by, by using uh, these five patterns. So let's, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the integrated supply chain of the physical products or conventional integrated supply chain. Uh, and this supply chain has uh, several uh, components or capabilities. Uh, let's uh, start from the product lifecycle management where you have to um, design, uh, research, design, develop, uh, sell the product and end of life the product etc so the entire product life cycle uh, has to be there and then supply chain management evaluating the supply chain improve the performance etc will be there uh, and then logistic management bringing the sources uh, and then uh, providing the distributor channels and so on and how you manage them uh, together will be there. Uh, and then ERP and financials to evaluate the commercial and uh, technical success of the products uh, will be there. So these are kind of a components needed in the, uh, the conventional product integrated supply chain. So what we can learn uh, for the API integrated supply chain uh, in this particular case, right? So we have an API product management, which is uh, equivalent to the product lifecycle management, uh, where we manage the life cycle of the API, uh, starting from uh, cradle to grave. Uh, then uh, you have the uh, API insights and monetization, which is similar to ERP and financial, to evaluate the technical and commercial success of the API. Uh, you have the API integrations and enablement to create a new API, which is similar to supply chain management. Then you have the API DevOps uh, and management uh, uh, to, to deploy 
the API uh, automatic way, uh, which is similar to the logistics. Uh, so putting them together, this particular picture will be uh, the components or so the capabilities of an integrated supply chain for the APIs. Right? But if you uh, take a deeper look, each of these needs uh, a lot of capabilities. Uh, so for an organization needs an integrated uh, supply chain, needs an entire set of capabilities uh, uh, listed in this particular uh, picture, all right? So in the case of API integration, for example, uh, you might have some legacy applications or you might have some um, industry um, uh, applications which are talking on a particular protocol or you might have several data uh, event and stream uh, uh, stream processing engines, etc. So you need uh, some way of creating APIs by combining uh, all of these items and there has to be capabilities available in order to do that. And from an API product management point of view, uh, you had to worry about how to onboard the users, how to manage their single sign-on, how to manage their subscriptions, and then uh, if they have to discover their documentation to build applications uh, and to understand the capabilities of the API, uh, provide an API marketplace for others to come and uh, discover the APIs available, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then as part of the API DevOps and management, uh, you had to worry about the CI CD pipeline so that you can manage the API automatically. And then uh, you might want to deploy uh, the APIs on a high available, uh, on a continuously available uh, manner so that you, you want to worry about uh, multi-cloud deployments, hybrid deployments, Kubernetes, or uh, blue-green canary deployment patterns uh, so that you can provide uh, uh, continuous uh, operations of the API and then seamless upgrades to a newer versions and so on. Then in order to evaluate uh, the, the success of the API, uh, you might use monitoring, uh, billing, analytics, tracing, reporting, and whatnot. So basically for an organization to build all this capability, they had to look for a vendor who provides all these capabilities and not a single uh, part only. Uh, or possibly they can uh, get uh, different parts from different vendors and put together to create the supply chain. But, but for a success of the, of the API product, uh, for the success of the API economy, basically you need all these capabilities in your supply chain uh, so that you can manage the supply chain effectively. And uh, this is our API market uh, uh, vision. Um, uh, so we took the analogy as quantum duality. Uh, so basically um, wave versus particle uh, nature of the quantum. Similarly, the API has a business side as well as the techni technology side. Uh, so the, uh, the, some people take the extreme of business or extreme of technology, but what will happen is if you take the extreme of uh, business, you might design a good business API, but uh, technically it might not work or not perform or not scale uh, very well, and it's it's be a failure. Or if you take a very good technology API, uh, still it can provide lots of technology values, but uh, as a business capability, it might not be a not so business viable API. So basically, you need to have a equal or sufficient amount of uh, uh, each side for the success of the API. And then these are like four uh, different uh, aspects you need to look for the API, starting from the federation and business model. How, how are you going to sell the APIs? Uh, how do you want to make money? Uh, we got a different monetization model. Then uh, uh, there are uh, heterogeneous API landscape uh, by in, involving multiple parties. Then people are moving to cloud, so you need to worry about the multi-cloud, hybrid deployment, et cetera, and then how the business models, uh, when, when the APIs are available in cloud or power uh, some cloud business and so on. Uh, and then modernizing, there is a modernization going on. Uh, people are using micro gateways, uh, service meshes, and so on. Um, you need to uh, enable um, automatic management of the API uh, or uh, seamless API uh, development experience. And then there are uh, several languages, polyglot languages and technologies available. So you might want to worry about uh, all of that language or heterogeneous nature of the technology, 
and you want to expose more than uh, just a REST or open uh, API specification uh, by using GraphQL, uh, GVRPC, uh, Kafka, etc. Right. So basically, for uh, success of the API, you need to worry about each of these, and each of these has a technology as well as the business angle, and you need to uh, look on those angles for the success of the API. And then there is a huge shift happening to the cloud native uh, uh, nature of the application. So we talk about the uh, application disaggregation, right? I talk about uh, going from a monolithic applications to API uh, by splitting the applications into various parts. So similar trend, uh, similar uh, disruption happen on the uh, on the infrastructure as well. Like for example, if you have like uh, we have monolithic running on a mainframe. Now you have API. Still, the API has to run on a mainframe. That is not going to work, right? So the the infrastructure also went on a similar transition, uh, starting from mainframe to uh, commodity physical servers to virtual servers to uh, containers, to, uh, et cetera. Right? So there is a transition happening on that side, uh, so that uh, each of these uh, uh, infrastructure is going on a very uh, lightweight and cloud native way into containers and Kubernetes. Then uh, when you have uh, all these APIs available, uh, typically, I mean, in a conventional way, uh, people combine them as a centralized uh, center of excellence, like ESBs and so on. But now it is uh, more of a decentralized integrations happening uh, with uh, isolated teams or self uh, managing teams. Uh, and they run uh, by using api like decentralized integrations. Uh, in the conventional way, uh, APIs are only available for um, internal users and uh, partners only, but now APIs are everywhere. Anybody can come and consume the APIs. API gateways are also going on a diet. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, no longer a centralized API. Um, often you have different APIs, uh, or edge gateway or micro gateway uh, powering a single API. And all of these are like distributed and so on and even payment model is like, uh, you pay at the front uh, versus uh, you pay as you go and so on so basically uh, the transition is happening uh, from uh, cloud native uh, as well and then if you look at the um, functionality so basically api federation uh, uh, you you need to if you look at the marketplace, uh, uh, the APIs are provided by multiple vendors. So uh, often uh, you, uh, the API um, marketplace has to work with multiple gateways, uh, right? Uh, so basically you might have a single control plane, but it has to manage multiple gateways. So it has to uh, consume API from multiple uh, gateways. So we have uh, we are working on a, a specification called the API Federation specifications, which you can uh, access from this particular link. And please uh, come and participate and contribute uh, to this as well. So basically, this allows you to uh, unify the analytics, uh, policy enforcement, subscription, billing, etc., on various gateways from the marketplace itself, so that uh, you can have a single marketplace. Uh, and then the APIs can be powered by multiple different kinds of gateways. So you can combine multiple vendors in order to provide a diversified ecosystem uh, for you to have an API strategy. And these are some statistics uh, we put to show the business impact of the API. Um, obviously, I mean, APIs are becoming uh, more and more important for the business. So this particular first uh, report, uh, this Akamai report came on 2019, I believe, uh, which says 83% of the uh, web traffic now is uh, coming from API, right? Not the HTML or not the web pages, but rather API traffic uh, is, uh, is the majority uh, traffic in the internet. And the second uh, report was uh, McKinsey's in uh, 2017, which says like one trillion uh, revenue is up, go, uh, up for grab uh, through uh, the APIs. Again, uh, this is keep on improving, uh, increasing, and, and uh, there are lots of revenues available as part of API business. And if you take the uh, third report is on, if you take the typical business, 25% uh, of their revenue is coming from API now. 
but uh, the trend is like it is keep on increasing, right? So obviously, I mean, at this stage, we need to worry about the APIs for a, uh, for a commercial success of the organization. So let's uh, switch uh, gears and talk a bit about uh, building this integrated API supply chain uh, with, uh, on, on a, how to implement as well as from a strategy point of view. So from WSO2, uh, we offer these products as, as uh, in order to facilitate the implementation of uh, the API supply chain. Uh, so we have API manager, uh, which can manage uh, API, basically it's provide full lifecycle API management capability. Then we have the enterprise integrator, which allows you to integrate uh, any systems, data sources and legacy applications and other systems to provide APIs. Then uh, we have the identity server, which provides single sign-on, uh, uh, identity federation, authentication authorization, all security aspects of the API life cycles. Then we have two verticals, uh, um, business vertical applications as well, uh, combined by using the APIs. Uh, one is the open banking for the uh, PSD2 and other open banking specifications. Uh, and then uh, we are also working on these healthcare integrations. So these are the products and solutions uh, we use or we uh, provide to, uh, to, to facilitate the API lifecycle, uh, sorry, API uh, integrated uh, cycle. So this is a full platform. So we uh, talk about what are the capabilities needed in order to uh, get the um, integrated supply chain. Um, so basically this particular picture shows uh, uh, what components are coming from these products which will fit into uh, the, the integrated supply chain. Uh, um, which provides uh, capabilities. Right? And you can run uh, this particular platform on top of uh, any of the infrastructure available at the bottom. Uh, so basically uh, it can be run on any kinds of infrastructure. And from a strategy point of view, we uh, offer uh, some consultancy services as well. This is uh, something called W30 Impulse uh, service. Uh, it's a strategic uh, uh, high level service, um, which uh, Asanka, you will meet Asanka in a bit, uh, Asanka heading this particular effort. So basically we go to customers and, and uh, work with the customer to, uh, to improve the people, process, and technology on top of culture and architecture for them to have a digital alignment and digitally transform the organization so that uh, they have a proper uh, digital strategy, long-term digital strategy, strategy um, for their organization. And as a specialized consultancy, we also have the API strategy consultancy where we uh, go and work uh, with the customer, work with the team, to define the strategy, um, then how to align the people, then bring all the technology alignment uh, to build the APIs, uh, build necessary capabilities needed uh, to have the proper API lifecycle, to sell as proper API supply chain, and then even to uh, engage, evangelize with other marketplace uh, providers and uh, even with the API, and then uh, iteratively improve uh, over the period uh, the entire experience of the API lifecycle, et cetera. So these are two um, kind of a strategic consultancy we do. And uh, please reach out to us if uh, you need more details. So, uh, I mean, these are some of the links you can reach out to us. Uh, the last three uh, is uh, how you can reach out to me. Um, please reach out uh, if you have any questions. And uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, attending the WSET Summit. <laughs>